Well, hello everyone. I am back. This is Robin Carter and I am an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator out of Flower Mound, Texas. And today I am here to share my last alternate using the May 2023 uh, paper pumpkin kit named Exploring in Color. If you've missed my other two videos, be sure to check those out on my channel. Just click on the videos under there and it'll be the last two that I have done. Thank you to all my subscribers who have uh, subscribed new since this paper pumpkin kit and especially those that have supported me for quite a long time. I really appreciate your subscriptions and your comments and thank you so much for your support. So my last one I'm going to do is show you uh, the one I saved for my paper pumpkin possibilities blog hop. So it has been posted on my blog post, but I thought I might as well go ahead and do a video in case you missed that Paper Pumpkin blog hop post. If you did miss it, be sure and jump over there to my blog that's listed in the description box below, and you will start with uh, my blog, and there'll be a little pumpkin with the next symbol in it, and you can uh, hop along everyone's different uh, posts that are in that blog hop. So let me get started. So uh, the main thing I was left with were the envelopes. So I have two here pre-cut and I pretty much use the same uh, technique, but I'm going to go ahead and work that with you today so that uh, you can see what I'm doing. So uh, this is our finished products here and here. And be sure and try to stick with me throughout this video as I love to share tips and tricks that I've learned along the way. So I hope you enjoy this video and find it helpful. So what I've already done is trimmed my envelopes. I take a small sliver off each side and I cut off the colorful flap so that I am left with this. Now let me go ahead and trim the bottom off. I should have done that ahead of time. And when you're working with envelopes, you want to make sure you have a sh fairly sharp or new blade. And it helps too if you go just off the where it's scored so that it doesn't fray as much. If you get some fraying, I got a little bit here, um, you can either just sand it with your fingers or if it's really bad, you might need a sanding block or an emery board, something like that that you probably already have around. Works just as well. Okay, so that's our two, and wow, that one's that one was worse. <laughs> I must have got too close to the score line. Okay, so what I did also is I brought in masking tape, and much like I used on my other envelope with the sunshine, I created a mask. And uh, Stampin' Up! just got masking paper in the last catalog or two, so it hasn't been around long, but if you've missed it, the item number for it is 155480, and it comes 12 to a pack, so quite a good value for the masking paper. And I already have one cut. <laughs> We're going to see if it holds up um, to uh, this card. Let me get a laminated grid sheet that I have so I can work on that as well. Give me just a second. I should have got that out. All right, it's right here. Now, I cut this actually using my scan and cut. I was able to put the masking paper directly on my mat and let it cut. It's pretty close. The one that's not as close is the next card but it's close enough, so um, you can see it's been used, so it's a little harder to see, maybe easier to see. If you go just below the grass, you'll get a better, uh, you won't have like a ghosting of blue just above the grass. So there I've put on my mask, and I hope it sticks good enough. And then I have a blending brush. That I've dedicated to just my blues, so I have a collection. I didn't do one for each color, uh, Stampin' Up! color. I just did it for a general color. So this is blue, and I use uh, Balmy Blue ink. So I'm going to ink the sky blue, and here's my best tip for you. So 
You can use a block. You could probably use a Stampin' Up case, uh, a laminate, anything slick. Uh, even the silicone mat would work. Lots of things would work. Oh, and I, I know my camera is attached to the table and my swirling sometimes makes it uh, spin. So I'll try to work softly. So I inked up my um, blending brush and I'm going to start off on my block, okay, just to get some of the ink going. And then, I mean, just barely setting it down, I'm going to start just swirling on the blue. And I'm not really applying any pressure at all, trying not to get any hard spots. So then after I have just kind of let it go and I'm not seeing much color, then I go in and start with a little heavier hand here. And then you can really see the color coming. When you run out, you can go back to your block or wherever you put your ink, pick up another bit of ink and start the same process again. Now, I forgot to mention that I didn't trim my car, uh, envelope piece down to a card size yet. I just wanted to trim off the sides and trim it last. So I think that's a pretty good sky. I'm happy with that. It looks really dark in the computer, but it's not that dark. And then we can peel off the mask. So we have a nice sky there. Um, I guess I could go ahead and do my buffalo background. And this one wasn't quite as close with the trees, but it's going to be work fine. There might be some white spots where there's trees, but it's going to work fine. All right, so let's do that again. So I'm going to pick up ink. Again, that's balmy blue, and I'm going to start it on my block just to get it smearing around. I could do it here on the laminated mat, but then I'm afraid I'll get a mess. And without any pressure, I'm just going to let that some of that ink come off the brush. And then as it starts getting lighter, I can just start, whoops, applying a little more pressure. I probably should have let it run a little more. But again, it's a whimsical sky, so it could have these darker spots and lighter spots. I don't think I'm going to have to go back to the ink on this one. Okay, let's see what that kind of looks like. I think that's going to be fine right there. All right, so there's your mask. And I was able to use it on my other two, as well as my local uh, customers that were able to come to class. We all kind of shared this. So this has had its useful life, I would say. So that's just a nice way to use uh, the masking paper if you haven't experienced that. Okay, now if you don't have some of these supplies and you would like to add some and you do not already have a demonstrator, I would really appreciate if you would use my host code. Uh, this host code runs, I know it's June, but I tend to change mine around the 10th or 11th of the month so that it gets through the paper pumpkin period. So this code is actually still good until like June 10th. And by the way, if you do not already have a demonstrator as well, now is the subscription period for the June Paper Pumpkin Kit. And it's gonna coordinate with the Countryside Corners. Let me see if I have that. It's right here. So there's also add-on dies that you um, can purchase through the online store. And so this is kind of gives you a glimpse of uh, one of the stamps and the card bases. So I think this one's going to be a cute one and I'm look, looking forward to working with that as well. So be sure and subscribe to my channel if you have not so that you're uh, and ring the bell for notifications and you'll get posted when I post alternates for those. I will be doing the Paper Pumpkin Possibilities blog hop again and those posts happen on the last Wednesday night of every month. So I have to save one for late. So if you're late making your kits, then you have a chance to see more um, alternates that you may want to for inspiration. Okay, so now let me start with just this one. And 
um, if you didn't notice, or I'm sure you noticed the clouds, and these come from the, um, oh, it left me. <laughs> uh, oh, Playing in the Rain. And that was a coordinating stamp set bundle that went with the February paper pumpkin. But if you still have your paper pumpkin and it had some clouds, you could actually use the negative to trace some clouds and then uh, fussy cut them out. Um, I used the dies to get these three different sizes, but you could freehand some clouds. You could trace those as a guide and then you would have your own clouds. Same thing with the sun. I got the sun from the stamp set uh, in that February paper pumpkin kit. And then this label is from the Timeless Arrangements Bundle. So I really love how it perfectly, or the sentiment from this kit, perfectly fit in that label. Cheers to another adventure. And I stamped that in Memento Black Ink. Now, I don't know if you can see, I did this on some of my other cards, but I took some glossy accents. And my bottle is very, very, very old. Um, I don't use it often, but I thought this was a great way to kind of make the water come to life. And I have added glossy accents to my favorite things. So my favorite things list is on my blog, and it's some products that I use that Stampin' Up! does not carry that help me paper craft, such as these uh, little envelopes that I keep my um, components in for cards. It also has my paper pumpkin sleeves that I store my uh, stamp sets in. So I've shared a lot of that on my previous blog, uh, not blog, my previous uh, videos. If you've missed that, then you can check those out there. So this is what I'm gonna do with the Buffalo one. I don't wanna take your time all night because it's pretty simple. All I did was stamp the sentiment. I did put these on dimensionals and raise them up. Okay, so I'm going to finish that one on my own later. I'll work on this one with you um, right here. So um, I used two deer that were from the Grove. Let me find that set right here. This is a friend and actually downline of mine's set. It's called Grassy Grove and it has coordinating dies, the Grove dies. Now, um, well, the deer are not in here, but there are two separate deer, these two, that do not have a stamp that coordinates. This stamp cuts out that deer and everything else. So I just, I like the size of the ones that were cut alone, that don't have a stamp. And then to make them come to life, I added my own, let me see if I got a white sheet of paper or something. I added an eye and the nose with the, uh, just a Sharpie black marker. And then I had a white gel pen to put little dots on the baby deer. And then the mama deer, I did the same with the face, but uh, generally they, they do not have the dots, but on the belly. So I just added white gel pen to her belly and tail. So that kind of makes them come to life. But I did want to use the tree stamp that came from the grove. That's what's here in the background, and I really like this uh, stamp. I should get my mask back out, though. You know, I should have been <laughs> asking, doing this live, and I could say, guys, where did I put it? Um, I'm going to do my best just to stamp it, so I'm not going to look for that. I think I did just stamp it on a few of my cards, so and the deer may cover it up anyway. So this is a red rubber stamp. So you're gonna know that your tree is up about that far. And I have my Mossy Meadow full-size pad. So I just wanna ink it up well. And then I'm gonna go along this horizon here and I'm just gonna stamp down. I think if it goes in the grass, it'll be okay. Okay, now that one I got almost all the way down. If you don't get all the way down, don't think, oh no, I did not, <laughs> my trees are floating in the air, because we're gonna fix that, because I wanna make the trunks brown anyway. So let me get my squirt bottle to 
get the big bulk of ink off this stamp. So I do that with a paper towel and then I take it to my chamois. That way my chamois just don't get inked up so fast that I have to go rinse them out. Now with your envelope paper, notice that's still wet. It takes a little bit for the ink to dry on the envelope. So be careful when you're working around that while it's still wet. But I'm going to have take my uh, early espresso marker. You can also use any of the brown blends or Sharpie you may have. And I'm going to go as carefully as I can on the trunk just to make it brown. And I'm sorry, it's hard to talk and do this one at the same time. So you got to be pretty careful, especially with this tip. Now the new markers do not have this fine, fine, fine writing tip. They have a little bullet tip, much like the blend markers. That would work well here, but I did not invest in all new markers just for that. I did in the new color collection that they have, but you can, I can't have it all. So <laughs> I do have to stay within some sort of budget. Okay, so that's how I did the trees in the background and the deer. I'm going to line up kind of like that. I have some pre-cut uh, clouds. I kind of put the big one over here. And then be sure to stamp your envelopes. Here I've already put a sun on my envelope for this card. And let's see. There's my, my cloud fell out earlier. And the medium and the small cloud. I kind of figured the small cloud goes higher in the sky because it's lighter. I don't know if that's uh, just correct. But first I do need to trim this down to the correct size to be a card front. So I'm going to first trim off the sky because I know that's going to be at four and one eight. Okay, here's another tip. So I have some fuzz left, I'm guessing, from the envelope. And you can either use, um, maybe your take your pick tool or a toothpick or something that will help get those fuzzies out. A good puff of air also works sometimes. <laughs> but anyway, that helps you not have as many fuzzies. Also, when you're cutting, if you put your cardstock up at the top of your cutter, let me pull this down. You're going to want to push in this direction with your blade up. That way your paper is hitting these barriers that help it not slide. So if I were to pull down and I accidentally pulled the envelope with me, it would be a crooked cut. So if you like it up, pull your blade up. If you like it down, pull your blade down. That's just a tip. All right, so I'm going to do this at four and one eighth. And I'm going to do it from the sky as to make, not take off any extra grass down there. So I want the side to be five and three eighths. Let's see how much I'm left with if I cut it from here. Okay, I'm going to cut this side because I like all this scenery. So there's our card front for that. So by the way, if you followed my alternates, uh, you know, with the first one, we got three card bases or three cards from one card base in the kit. So that alone is 27 cards. And then if you did each of these envelopes, you would have nine more. So like 36 cards from this kit. I know a lot of you are like, what would I do with all those cards? But you don't have to make them all, just a few if you uh, don't need that many cards. But um, I like seeing what I can do with those. And I really didn't come up with a better option than my first option with the card bases. So that's why I switched to the envelopes to work on those. <coughs> and there's my tickle in the throat for the video. I always have one of those. So we're just gonna embrace those as they come along. All right, so I should have a card base out. I've already scored them, I remember doing that.
but I can grab another. When I'm not feeling inspiration or in between kits, I like to just cut card bases. I score once, cut once, and then I have a whole slew of them that I don't have to stop and actually make them while I'm working. So my tip on your card bases, if you make your own or buy them, one side could be just a hair bigger. So you want that side to go on the top. Another question that people ask a lot is, so I scored this way, and you want to fold in so that the mountain goes inside the card. All right, I still see that a little wet. Let me fan this off to the side so it doesn't make you dizzy. I guess I could go ahead and put dimensionals on my clouds and stuff to give it another little drying time. Now on my big dimensionals, I do cut them in half to use. Um, I find that half is enough, and especially on these clouds, you just need a little bit. So I, by cutting the one, I'm able to spread them out across the cloud. That one already has one. Okay, now for your deer, I think I'm gonna use my mini dimensionals. If you run out of these, you can get them from the online store. Sometimes our uh, kids come with the minis as well. So I'm gonna try to, I should be using my, take, my pick tool. So I can see over my fingers where I'm putting it. Okay, whoops. Mama deer. The only thing by putting the deer with dimensionals is you're just going to have to be careful when you stick it in the envelope that their feet don't get um, stuck. All right, let's check the trees. Okay, only a little part is looking wet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the dry part of my paper towel and go straight down on it. That way it won't smear it. If anything is wet, it will just should just pick it up. So I just got a little bit of ink. All right, so the other thing with envelope paper is it's very, very thin, okay? I mean, you can see that stamp image almost came through. So if you're gonna use liquid adhesive, be, be very uh, frugal with it is the best thing I know because it will show uh, more than double adhesive. Now, I still have the old snail um, adhesive. They did make a new one that you can get through the online store, but I'm gonna use my double-sided tape on this. Another thing I like to use when I'm doing double tape, especially the snail, is maybe a silicone mat, something to give it a little bit of cushion that helps get all the tape. Because sometimes you just get partial tape, at least with this old style. I know, I have a stash of that. I apparently got too much and I think I'm out and then I find another refill, so. All right, so when I use snail, since I'm not gonna have wiggle room, I do just kind of look along my uh, card here to look for equal border and that's kind of crooked. If I pick it up quickly, I can do it again. Let me start from the top. This is why I love to use liquid glue, but I didn't want to have the bump in my card. <laughs> the deer stuck. <laughs> I was like, what is the hump? All right, so then I'm going to put on the mama and the baby, or the mama here, baby here. And I just kind of laid them where I think I kind of want them. Now another option, if you don't have the Grove set and you're like, I'm just a paper pumpkin subscriber, Robin, what can I use? Well, back in March of 2020, there was a bunny and it was in the bonus set. Let me get that out. It was called No Matter the Weather and it was the March and we got a bonus stamp set of these lovely stamps. And this is not full size, but this is the bunny. So you could easily put a bunny there and he would be cute. 
or maybe you could have him here hopping down the bunny trail. So that's just some options for you there. I do like to make my paper pumpkin kits more avid. That's just me. I really love to jazz them up. Um, but I love the inspiration that it starts me with the colors and um, different options that I may not normally grab on an occasion. It, it helps me get more use out of all my other supplies as well. So I do try to use current stuff, even though I have some favorite retired stuff. But if you're a Paper Pumpkin subscriber, I do... Uh, well, it's, it's bad to assume you've been a subscriber for a while, but you may have, and you may have those stamps. So I want to show you the value you can get from saving your stamp sets and using them over and over on different projects. <clears throat> okay, I've misplaced my pre-cut sun. I'll check my envelope here in a second. Get the cloud on there. There he is. He's in my little goodie box. All right, and I need dimensionals for the sun. I did uh, stamp the sun in Daffodil Delight. I tried crushed curry and it just seemed a little too dark. So I went back to Daffodil Delight. Okay, and then let's put the sun in here somewhere. Okay, so we're going to have our sentiment here, but one other thing I've used are these birds. And the birds come from a previous paper pumpkin kit. Um, it's from, <laughs> yeah, I have it around here somewhere. Um, I think it's, oh, it's someone that had the mask. So it's March 2021. So it also had some lovely evergreen trees, but I really like these birds. So I just took black, my memento black, and dip the birds, and make sure you get them flying the right direction. And I'm just going to have them coming in from the trees there. In some cases, I've put them elsewhere, but I find my label tends to cover them up. So I think one is all I'm going to add to this one. And so here is a sentiment, but let me show you one that I found, uh, another set. I really like this sentiment with these type of cards. You've come so far and accomplished so much. I think those would be great on the full base mountains. And that comes from a new stamp set in the catalog called Wonderful Thoughts. And I love uh, sentiment stamp sets because... Uh, these can be used with any set you like. It has many different occasions on there. And its number is 161899. And it's 14 stamps of all kinds of different sentiments. So if you need some additional sentiments, that would be a good thing to add on to your order if you're getting like the dies that are seven or six dollars. But the minimum shipping is $7.95. So if you have anything else you'd want to add to your collection, be sure and add those at the same time to help spread out the shipping costs across your products. So then I have a coordinating envelope and I'm gonna stick this in and I just use the trees here in the corner. So that is that card. Let me, I did all these the same. You can see here I do have a few more birds. Um, this buffalo card, I actually stamped the sentiment right in the background. I didn't use a label like I did on these. So, oh, I, I, I did show you the glossy accents there. So I hope you've enjoyed this alternate using the envelopes. I thought they were way too pretty to use as envelopes. So um, if you make these, you can get nine more cards, or if you just want to make a few to have the option of some different cards, um, you know, it's your kit. You do with it what you want. So I hope you've enjoyed this kit. I have, and I'm really looking forward to the June uh, kit. So be sure to subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate everyone. I love your comments. I love hearing when you state where you're from. It just 
interesting. I do read them all and I try to uh, do a reply of thank you or something simple. But uh, so thanks for joining me. Enjoy your kit. If you haven't finished it up, get it finished up because June is right around the corner. If you have any questions or anything I can help you with, leave that in the comments below and I will be sure to uh, see what I can do to help you. And until my next video, have a great one. Bye-bye.